Hello everyone, and welcome. We have quite a lot to cover in this one. There's been a ton of new changes to the game, so we'll start off with a couple changes to the entropy system. When you're on hard mode, elite enemies, which are bosses, are always in their harder versions now. Instead, you have an option where they can summon enemies. They'll just summon regular enemies into the battle. There's been a change to exchange spaces, prices, so now it only affects things like HP mixtures, uh, healing, and removing debuffs are the three. It doesn't affect things like potentials, tactics, ascensions, uh, HP upgrades, MP upgrades, none of those get affected by the price. So now if you're running the standard 75 entropy to get the shop refreshes and the exchange points, you're able to do it in this way that I've set up that doesn't hide any space info. Another thing I should mention is that this effect here got nerfed really hard. We went from selling tactics at like 120 to somewhere like 80 now. It's a pretty big hit to selling tactics. But the new changes more than make up for the money we lost doing that. And then... The other new option is Advanced Battle Spaces difficulty. Those are going to be like the previous Advanced Spaces, but now they have an extra kind of challenge to them. We'll see those once we get to one. For Tactics on my Legacy, I've got it set up for Skill Lightning, Pulsing Lightning, Thunder and Lightning, and Attack Lightning. What this does is that if an enemy has an impulse on them and they get hit by one of those attack lightning lightning chains, uh, they do a burst of damage in an AoE. This is the same build I used previously on Taokaka. It still works really well on her. Probably about the same, if not even maybe a little better. So to talk about Taokaka, she also got a rework. I... I guess revamp, I don't know what the proper word for it would be. She still plays generally the same as she did before, but her moves are a lot more fluid now, and she has better damage output. What I'm going to be looking for is heavy strike upgrades and dash attack upgrades. So this heavy strike upgrade is going to be similar to before, where now if you hold it long enough, you leave behind scratch marks. It also gives you super armor while you're in it now. I don't remember if that was in there before or not. But either way, it's going to be generally the same as the previous, the previous uh, hold attacks or heavy attacks. Nothing really changed too drastically, other than, uh, I'm trying to remember what, I think it's like Dancing Edge or something. One of her potentials got changed quite a bit. Otherwise, they all still feel mostly the same. And when I say, like, they feel the same, I mean they're, they're the same general concept. They just play better now. So what I'm doing most of the time on the early stages of Taokaka is that I'm just tapping my skill button twice in a row quickly. What that does is it applies the impulses from my tactics without draining my MP. It also is good just for like pushing enemies away or putting them into stagger, that type of thing, canceling their attacks. I'm aiming to upgrade the lightning as much as possible and then I want to go into lightning orbs as soon as possible as well. That gives lightning orb thunder where every time a lightning orb hits something it'll uh, do a chain lightning, and that will also set off the thunder and lightning impulses that I took. 
So here's one of the new types of stages. There's quite a few of them. This is advanced battle. Instead of having like an advanced tactic space, we have these advanced battle spaces. They come with an extra type of challenge to them for just this stage itself. So the one that I have on right now is that if I take damage, it will limit my sight range for a little bit. None of the challenges of these are really too hard. They're all very manageable. So here I took a hit and you can see that I have the reduced vision range. It doesn't last that long and even with it on it's not that big of a deal. So the reward for clearing these advanced spaces now is it's going to give you two upgrades instead of one. So it'll give two potentials, two tactics, or two of HP or MP increase. I got lucky and got the two potentials, which is the best one you can get. So we're gonna go into dash attacks now, since it's here, and this is one of the things that'll be a little different than before. We'll show it off in a minute. And then we'll pick up triple dash as well, that'll be nice. So the new dash attacks are pretty similar to the old ones, except you can also leave this... I think you could do something similar before, too. You can leave this extra uh, claw mark behind. And then the main thing about them is they're much, much quicker than before. You're able to basically dash cancel out of them or jump cancel out of them at any point of it. So the final claw marks will show up if you finish the entire combo chain. There's like a couple hits to it. Otherwise, if you cancel it early, those final claw marks won't, won't appear. You're a little bit vulnerable during the animation of the final hit, but it's not really that big of a deal. And there is a way to unlock invulnerability for that to kind of fix the problem too. Oh, another thing I should mention is that there's uh, a little small optimization thing I did with my legacy tactics. Since I have Chain Lightning on my attacks, I put it on Rachel specifically. Because Rachel's legacy passive gives you those bats, you can see they're attacking right now. Those will actually help you chain... They will actually help you proc things like Chain Lightning, uh, frost attack. They'll even proc things like uh, shadow attacks, and uh, I'm not entirely sure if they proc fire spirits, but I believe they do. So that's just something to a little bit of info for people. If you're running a attack type build, it's useful to have Rachel as one of your legacy characters. Since it's here, I'll go ahead and pick up Almost Becoming 2 as well. This is going to be very similar to the old Shadow. I think before they took MP instead of SP. I'm not entirely sure on that though. That might be the only difference. Stages like this are always a little bit annoying. Uh. I did not expect that to happen. It was very, very good timing for what I was about to talk about. When you're doing a dash attack build like this, it's very easy to accidentally dash attack into one of the traps. Especially when that trap just shows up from off screen. 
I don't actually know if I've had this room layout before. It's not one I remember. There are certain room lay layouts that I would never take on Stage 8 before, because Stage 8 would have, like, a guaranteed exchange or choppers or T-show, and I'd always be taking those. Okay, Dancing Edge. I think I mentioned this one earlier. It's one that got actual major changes to it. It's a dash input now. I really don't like the input, because it's way too easy to input instead of a, just a regular dash. Which is fine once you have all the upgrades for it. There's an upgrade where it can be used infinitely, and you basically just become immortal. But I... This is one of probably one of her strongest potentials when upgraded. But I I really don't like using it. So if you can see here, I'm trying to mash out a jump as soon as I can after this animation is done. This animation is really laggy for some reason. It It's weird because the old dancing edge wasn't that laggy. And you can cancel the animation out into attacks, but you can't cancel it into a jump for some reason. So, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just a bug or if they intended it to be that way, but I think Dancing Edge doesn't really feel too good for me to use right now. Like I said, it's, it's really broken once you get the upgrades for it, especially the infinite dashes on it. But I don't really enjoy using it too much as it is right now. I also think it's just, like, less interesting gameplay-wise, too, than the other potentials that Taokaka has. It's basically just another Mai build, except it's way better. Because it has infinite dashes instead of just three. I'm kind of worried that, as time goes on, there's going to be, like, a, a power creep in this game and everything is going to get too much invincibility frames and damage. That was like a big concern when I saw how powerful Rachel was. And seeing... The new Taokaka isn't too overpowered, but there's some things that I, I don't really like seeing. The infinite uh, invulnerability dashes being one of them. So I picked up a Heavy Strike up uh, upgrade somewhere. Or uh, maybe it was one of the dash attack upgrades. I'll have to double check. But I picked up an upgrade to where the dash attacks can now be used infinitely. And then if you wanted to use the final claw marks, you just hold down the dash attack button. boss actually went down pretty quickly, and I don't know exactly why. I was more paid attention to talking than I was actually paying attention to the boss fight, honestly. Okay, so yes. It is just a regular upgrade for dash, where it can be used infinitely. And then dash and heavy strike are going to have some synergies with each other. So, you can see here, for example, uh, when I get the super armor upgrade, it also gives an upgrade for heavy strike, where you get damage reduction during it. I should also have... maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. I Or I might need a different... I think I need another upgrade for heavy strike before I get the other uh, hidden effect between the two that I'm thinking of. Okay, so I went into this instantly, just out of habit, but... This is one of the new stage types. It's called a Covenant, and these things are extremely good. Some more than others, but the ones that are good are really, really good. There's a couple that I've shown where uh, it just completely removes the cooldown from Dash or Legacy. I guess I haven't put those videos out yet, depending on when I upload this one. Anyways, 
Let's see what we have here. We can refresh goods two times. Uh, tactics are invalid. Okay, Beckoning Cat. I, I tried this one on a different one, and honestly, I think it's really, really bad. What it does is it removes all of the rewards from spaces entirely. So if I will go to a potential space, I don't get a potential anymore. I only get 150 exchange points. And that applies to the advanced battle spaces too. When I read this, I thought it would double advanced battle space reward, so I'd be getting four rewards from it. But no, you only get 300 exchange points. It's really, really bad. You have no way of spending that much exchange points, even if you're refreshing shops. And even if you do spend on all your refreshes and all the shop stuff, I'm pretty sure you're going to be getting way less than if you had just gone to the spaces themselves. Especially because of the... it takes away the advanced battle space rewards too. I think this is a really trash option. The others are fine. This would be really strong if I was going a build where I didn't need tactics, but this build actually relies on tactics, so we'll go for the extra refreshes in the shop. Sadly, I really didn't get too many... too interesting of a Covenant reward to show off there. There's some pretty crazy ones. There's one that increases attack based on how much HP you have, and then there's another uh, there's another new thing for Black Market, where every time you perfect clear a space, you get an extra 50% HP. If you manage to get both of those in the same run, you'll probably go like crazy on how much damage you end up with. Even without having that Black Market upgrade, I got that to over 200% extra damage just by starting with extra HP in my Mind Crystals, and you actually start out with more HP now than you did before. They increase the cap on your Mind Upgrade levels, so you, have, you can have higher starting HP than you did before. Which is why you see right now I'm at I'm already at 4000 HP. That's usually what I would be at the end of the run if I had bought some HP upgrades. Honestly, I think they kind of need to add like a harder game mode or something or make some of the entry buffs a little bit harder like enemies have more HP. So I think this up this patch has uh, really upgraded how strong of characters you can make in a general sense. Even though the characters are starting to feel, like, a little too strong for the game. I mean, they were already doing that before, but now it's a lot easier to access. One of my complaints about this game before, which I I really love this game, and when I say I complain about something, it's not really... it wasn't that big of a deal for me. It's something I... my opinion about the game. But anyways, one of my, like, few complaints about the game was that... If you wanted to make really strong Evo types, you had to play the game in a, a weird way where you focused entirely on how much money you could make off of uh, things like perfect clearing rooms, the speedrun reward for clearing rooms, those are two different buffs you could buy to start with, and then for mine crystals you would take perfect clearing bosses, and the whole like meta of getting a strong character was based around that. Whereas exchange rooms are still really overpowered in this patch too, but you have way more opportunities to get potentials now without them. It feels like there's just a lot more potential spaces in general, 
you have the new double uh, advanced spaces, which can give you double, and then... <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much it. Whereas before, the way that a lot of the... The way that the rooms would generate is that you would have you would always have like three tactic spaces on the same thing or you would get a potential space there wasn't really a whole lot of mixing and matching to the way that room layouts or the room selections could load whereas with the new system it's much more there's a lot more variety in the rooms that you see Which also helps with just not making, if not as many shops show up during the runs, then you can't use them as your meta anyways. A lot of times you still get a decent amount of shops from what I've seen, it just kinda, there's always a factor of luck to it, but you still see plenty of them. You can still do like a similar thing to what you would do before, like I talked about with the strategy where you just make the most out of money amount of money and there's also like there's some new effects from covenant and uh, black market that also really play into that playstyle but it doesn't feel like it's the only way to go anymore you can see i've already got a ton of potentials and i'm only just finishing stage two right now and I really haven't taken that many shops, I don't think. Ah, oh, that was dumb. I was hoping I could, uh, get him into health threshold before he disappeared, so that's why I just kind of stood there. Ah, that's unfortunate. Another thing, they did change up, uh... Couple of the boss arenas a little bit. So you could see here, I actually took damage on accident because I touched the side of the stage here. The uh, sand on the side deals damage to you now. I would like to start getting. Okay, here we go into Falling Cat if I can soon. Falling Cat is pretty much the same as it was before. It's a skill now, though. So it scales off of skill tactics and costs a little bit of MP. It takes a couple of upgrades to really start getting good, but you can also upgrade it way more than you could before with just basic upgrades, and then it has a lot of hidden effects. So here's another new type of... It's sort of new. You would see these randomly before, something similar to this. But now it's a it's just a stage that shows up. My opinion is that these aren't very good based on what I've seen so far. Maybe there's a really good option in here, but I haven't seen one that I ever want to take. It feels like the downsides really aren't worth the upside that you get in return for it, in my opinion. I don't know, there could be there could be some situations where it's good, or there could be one that I've missed that's good, but like I said, in my opinion, I I haven't seen a trial stage that felt worth taking. I'm really surprised I haven't seen the electric upgrade that I need. It's really strange, actually. I've gotten so many upgrades without seeing it. Or, or did I just blindly skip past it at some point? That is very possible if I was talking about something, but I don't think I don't think I would have.
Disabled? Oh! It's my covenant that I took. My covenant restriction. Okay. I don't even remember what covenant I took at this point. Okay, I should not have actually taken that. I did not read enough. That's fine, though. We don't really need that red effect. It's just something that, uh, something that helps. Uh, yeah, we're not, we're not really having a run where I'm making enough money to even make use of that covenant, covenant effect. That's fine, though. The one thing about the Covenant effects that I've noticed is that some of them seem to be fixed in what which debuff you get, and some of them aren't. Some of them seem random. Maybe all of them are random and I just haven't done enough uh, runs to see that, but in a lot of the runs that I saw, certain ones would be fixed and other ones would have random. So that's part of the reason why I just kind of wasn't paying attention to the debuff that the Covenant effect gave me. I don't think we're gonna bother with this. Really, I don't need tactics anymore, especially since I can't get the red effect I want. So I'll only pick them up if I don't have any other option. So here's, I mentioned it before, but you can see it in play. I could either take a new upgrade for my Thunderbolts here, or I can have an Ascension. Those, the ascensions just show up in regular spaces now, regular tactic spaces. There is no such thing as an actual uh, ascension stage anymore. You can still buy them in the shop as well, but otherwise, you can't find them. Okay, here we go. We maxed out our Heavy Strike, and we can show off something new with that. You need both Heavy Strike and some of the Dash Attack upgrades to get these hidden or hidden effects. The longer your, the longer you hold the Heavy Strike, the faster it's going to get, and the more damage it's going to deal. This ends up doing really good damage, especially if you have something like uh, Frost Attacks in particular. It'll proc the Frost Burst often, and the extra damage on the attacks will scale up. You can see that just how quickly he's dying. It's actually kind of insane. And I think the funny part about that is that uh, I didn't have my impulse on him to start triggering that. I also did not have shadows. Alright, let's see how much it does with the shadows. I think the impulses wore off too. Well, that's fine. I'd like to upgrade both Falling Cat and the Baseballs, but I don't know if I'm gonna get enough potentials this run to do that. So here there has been some changes to the black market, there's a couple new options. I believe I mentioned this one, I don't remember if it was on this take or another one I tried, but uh, when you increase a battle space without taking damage, you get 50% extra. This would be really good if I got it at the start of the run, but I'm already on stage 4, so I don't know if it's really going to pay itself back. It's going to be 
pretty hard to do that. Exchange points increase by 100% when perfect clearing a space. This one's really useful to get more money. And then instantly receive 999. This used to be 777. And it got buffed. The perfect clearing one is really good as well. There's been a few runs where I've just ended up with more money than I could actually spend. Since I generally only spend on potentials and not anything else. Sometimes, depending on the character and the build I'm doing, I'll buy HP and MP upgrades, but otherwise... Buying tactics from the shop is not worth it, in my opinion. If I'm running like a, a specific build that I have in mind, or if I want a specific element, Trying to get things out of the shop tactics from buying them that you actually want in your build is really... Wait, what's going on here? Why, why do you have invincibility? Well, that was strange. There's a... Hang on. Let me pay attention for just a minute. Okay. There is a debuff in the advanced spaces that gives them invincibility, but there, there wasn't that debuff in that run. That debuff was for, uh, Thunder randomly striking, I think. I didn't really look at it. I was just kind of playing and talking. Anytime you try to do commentary on top of playing a game at the same time, your awareness of what's going on just plummets, basically. It's really hard to multitask like that. So maybe it was a different debuff than I thought it was. Something you guys can uh, get mad at me about in the comments, too, is that I always forget to use my shadows on Taukaka. <laughs> Not even just a commentary problem. I, I have that problem when I'm playing normally, too. I might actually need to go ahead and burn through my elixir here. This is a really, really bad set of uh, debuffs that we have going on for Taukaka. I haven't been perfect clearing bosses to remove them. One of the worst debuffs for Taukaka is... Uh, enemies have extra armor, which is one of the worst debuffs in the game just in general. But Taukaka in particular is really unsafe unless you're putting enemies into hit stun often. And then the afterlife bombs are easy to just kind of accidentally dash into. Alright, Falling Cat will be maxed out now. Sort of. We still need some of the uh, hidden effects, but the attack itself will be a lot stronger now. You really need those upgrades before Falling Cat starts to become as good. In particular, you really want the first upgrade, where it says she follows up with more brutal attacks. I guess I'll go ahead and grab some more HP, just try to throw the run on accident somehow. So now we can go ahead and show up the Falling Cat. 
it's very similar to before. One of the new things you can see already is that since I have an upgrade where I can throw bowling balls, it also applies to the falling hat. And then we can go ahead and pick up this one for Watch Your Feet, where Kaka, Kaka Clan Kittens will assist in combat. That is a tongue twister to say. This will do a similar thing, where our Falling Cat will now have extra kittens assisted. At this point, I guess I can just start really prioritizing event types of stages. There's really no point for me to go into tactics rooms. I have all the tactics that I need. Potential spaces, I guess, are still fine. I'm a little bit worried about how long the new runs are going to be in terms of me trying to do gameplay videos on them. Because I think runs are generally a lot longer, especially if, depending on how I play out the last area, which we'll talk about when we get there. Now we'll pick up the upgrade here for Spinny Spinny, which will uh, give another effect to our Falling Cat. It also upgrades the, the down attack here, but... I, I never use this thing. It's so hard to actually use properly. It's not not really that good either. It's so funny. I, I believe you have this just by default on Taukaka now. If you just tap down an attack, you do this. It's like I said, it's it's not very good. It can do some damage, but you have like way better options instead. And then I think we have everything else we need. This upgrade's pretty interesting. It gives a lot of uh, hidden effects where the more times you hit consecutively in the air, you'll get different types of buffs. But I want to try and get into the rest of these upgrades because there's uh, something really cool with it that I want to show off. could go ahead and pick this up as well. It's good for the baseball attack, but I'll wait on that. Okay, here we go. This is what I wanted. I'm not sure exactly what all hidden effects or what all upgrades you need for it, but this hidden effect up here in green is pretty fun to use. You do up attack and you hold skill. And... Kaukaka does a Kamehameha! It's pretty funny. It's not really something I expected them to give her, but I'm glad it's here because it's funny. It does a lot of damage too, as you can see. You can run uh, skill builds with like skill cold now and get a lot of damage out of it. We'll get a good hit here. <laughs> I messed it up. I didn't do it quick enough. If I that would have hit her, I would have got her into the stun state and we could have skipped this entire thing. But it's fine. I want to get her stunned, and then... I need a summon before I do that, though. Alright, here we go. She's dead. Oh, 
That's a really fun, weird thing that they decided to give her. It takes quite a while to get into all the potentials that you need for it, but it's it's fun to use. Guess we'll go ahead and grab this as well. Okay, and here we have the final new change of runs. Omega Sector is gone, and Alpha Sector is replacing it. Now you just choose extra stages to go to, and you can face Susano at any time. There are a limit to how many stages you can farm this way, but there's quite a lot. You can go up to somewhere around stage 15, I believe. So that is one of the reasons why said runs can get really long now. The other reason is just that generally I'm taking way more combat stages than I would in the past because of how the new uh, how the new rooms work in terms of uh, just what types of selections can show off. I'm taking potential stages a lot more often instead of being forced into picking event stages on a lot of times. It's hard for me to really explain that in depth right now. I've had to explain so much stuff at the point of this run that I'm just like losing my mind. <laughs> That's the best way to explain it. I don't even know how to try to say what I what I mean at this point. That's kind of why I'm a little bit worried about having longer runs, is for one, I like to explain a lot of things during my runs, so it can get quite overwhelming by the end of a run. And then the other thing is that, what the- okay, I Kaukaka just wanted to go to space I guess for a minute there. <clears throat> The other thing is that I've noticed that if I if I don't have a lot of things to explain, I have a lot of hard time filling in commentary. I'm not the type of person that can just talk about random things. I need like an objective to talk about. So I think with that being said, we're going to not farm the Omega Sector for another... You can stay here for quite a while. I'm just going to go straight into Susano so I keep the rest of my mental sanity. I don't know. <laughs> That's not a good way to put it. I'm just mentally drained at this point. Okay, I got it again there. Right, so something funny that you can do is... I think it's probably what happened before to you when I shot up into the air randomly. I, there's a momentum cancel that I found with the dash attacks. There we go, I got it again. As you're doing, like, uh, there's a certain part of the animation for the final hit. You can cancel it into your dash attack, and you just get a bunch of forward momentum that way. Okay, let's freeze him here. Uh, never mind. He took too, too much damage. I want to show this off. Here we go. Just wait, wait, come back. <laughs> Look at this. It's so fucking funny to me. I don't know why. How Kaka just stands there and slashes like 20 times per, per second and everything just dies. I remember, that's not even with uh, Frost increasing my damage or anything. Oh, here's another funny thing you can do. If you can get an enemy in the air like that, you can uh, just... There's an upgrade where you can use your air attack infinitely, and you can just kind of... I don't know if Susano's heavier or something. I, I got a normal enemy to the point where I just took it off screen. I'm not sure if it's possible to do it on Susano or not.
There we go. I wanted to end kill him with the baseballs, because I think that's pretty funny to do. Okay, there we go. There's a lot of stuff I still didn't get to show off with Taukaka, like... The baseballs I didn't get to show off quite as much, and... I guess the dancing edge, or whatever it's called. I didn't quite get to explain all the potentials I picked up either, but... Hopefully it gives you guys a decent... Uh, overview of kind of how the new Taukaka works and looks. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one.